It's been a little while, but I'm back. This is a rotating 60S 3406E core engine that I bought from a big core supplier who I've bought lots and lots of core engines from in the past. Uh, if you don't know much about the core engine market, more or less the way that they're sold is either as rotating cores or non-rotating cores, and that's pretty much all the information that you get. So what a rotating core is, is one that will rotate all the way around, meaning that the crankshaft will go 360 degrees. And then a non-rotating core would be one that's either locked up or won't make it all the way around because something's come apart in the top end or whatever the case may be. You don't really get any kind of history on the engine, where it came from, what else may or may not be wrong with it or anything like that. It's just kind of a take it or leave it, it is what it is kind of thing in the core engine market. So I've got a pretty good idea that this one was pulled because it had water in the oil because of that right there. But beyond that, I know absolutely nothing about the history of this particular engine or any kind of uh, specific information about it. So what I'm going to do in this video is take this old core engine and see if I can get it fired up and running here in the shop floor. The first thing I'm going to do is strip all the extra wires and hoses and garbage off this thing and get it cleaned up. So I'll pull the clutch off of it and uh, probably the fan hub. Alternator, alternator bracket, all the extra associated wires and hoses that are still there from when it was in the truck that it came out of. I'll get it all cleaned up and then I'll start to look at what is um, what's missing what's broken what i'm going to need to replace and start getting it together so that i can hopefully get it to fire up well that looks a lot better doesn't it there's a pile of parts that came off of it i've already hauled a little bit of it off but that's most of it So now I can tell what I'm dealing with and what I'm going to need to do. I've got a uh, broken boost sensor here, so I'll have to run over there and grab one of those and stick in it. Other than that, it looks like all the sensors are there and intact and all the other wiring is there and intact. So I'm going to need a fuel return hose and I'm going to probably put something besides this on there. I'm going to save that one. It's probably not any good. So one thing I noticed about this engine is that it is almost completely original. So this is one of those good old E models that just ran and ran and never had anything wrong with it. Um, water pumps original, oil coolers original, cylinder heads original. The only thing it looks like they've changed is the air compressor. That's a reman air compressor, but other than that, I'd say this was a good one. And I don't know how many miles is on this thing. I'll grab the laptop here in a few minutes and plug into it and see what the ECM shows. Another thing about this engine, and this is actually the reason that I bought it. It's serial number 60S26817. So obviously that means it's above 60S25054. And what that means is that this is a strong block engine. So it has the 137-8466 strong e-model block and uh, I don't think you can see down in there to see that no but if you could right there where I just had the camera you would see 137 and um, so a lot of guys don't realize that there are strong block 6TS is out there um, notice they still use the single thermostat thermostat housing and the old 5EK and 6TS style fuel setup. But it does have the strong block. So the difference between this engine and a 1LW would be that the 1LW would have the updated fuel system and it would have the two thermostat thermostat housing. Plus it would have the longer rear water bonnet where it puts the coolant in here at number six rather than this 90 degree elbow that goes in at number four. So uh, these strong block 6TS's are just like any other 5EK or 6TS. The only difference is the block itself. 
And there are a few more differences between this engine and a 1LW other than what I just named off. I was just mainly talking about the things you can see on the outside of the engine. A uh, 1LW is gonna use different injectors and a different camshaft depending on the horsepower rating and a few other little things. But anyway, um, I've got this spinny thing here cleaned up, ready to go on it. And uh, need to put that plug in the oil pan and a few other little things. I'll get that boost sensor put in right there and I'll see if I can't track down those couple of hoses that I need for fuel. The engine serial number matches 60S26817. Uh, let's see what it's set at. Looks like it's still set at 435 and let's see how many miles are on it. Total distance, 831,000. Well, I would have lost that bet. I would have figured over a million, but anyway. So it's an all original E model with about 831,000 on it. I did notice that they had changed the fuel transfer pump too, uh, along with the air compressor. But other than those two things, it appears to be all original. I've got this fuel line changed out with one that's in a little bit better shape than the one that was on it before. The new used boost sensor is on and ready to go. Got a fuel suction line on. The turbo is mounted. Got that plug in the oil pan down there. It looks like I'm still missing an oil filter. So I guess I need to run over and grab a starter and some battery cables and the harnesses for the ECM and get some oil in it. And when I get all that done, I will be ready to start cranking on it. Well, the jakes are in a little bit rough shape, but all in all, not too bad, really. The rollers on the rocker arms aren't bad. So that's that's not too bad. Those jakes will clean up. Really not too bad. I've been cranking on it a little bit. I wanted to crank on it just enough to see that I was gonna have oil pressure before I went any further. So what I did, I took this this little piece of hose off. That's just a, a piece of hose with a plug in it. But that line right there is what goes to the oil pressure gauge in the cab of the truck. So I took that line off and cranked on it until I got a wheel coming out of that fitting and that tells me that I've got a wheel pressure and the oil pump is working. All right, I've got everything uh, wired up. Everything's connected. Everything's ready to go. I've got a throttle pedal here. I just bolted to the peanut cover. Well, I had a little problem I had to fix. What happened was this fuel return check valve right here had gotten stuck from sitting. And um, so I was noticing as I was pumping the hand primer that it was getting really hard to pump and then it got to the point where you couldn't pump it at all and I wasn't getting any return fuel. So the most obvious first place to go was this check valve. So I started loosening it up and sure enough as I did, fuel started bypassing around it in the housing there and started coming out here where it's supposed to. So I knew that that check valve must be stuck at that point. I went ahead and took it on out and got it broke loose with the screwdriver and then um, put it back in. So when I got it back in, I could pump the hand primer again and I could get return fuel to come out like it should. So I went ahead and started cranking on the engine again. And as I was cranking, I was not getting any return fuel, which I should be. 
if that engine's cranking, it's turning the transfer pump and I should be getting return fuel just like I would if I was pumping the hand primer. So at that point, I knew the transfer pump must not be any good. Uh, probably what happened was it, the transfer pump originally was fine, but as I was initially cranking with this check valve stuck closed, it built too much fuel pressure and uh, screwed up the transfer pump internally. There's nothing broken that I can see but it's really hard to turn so there's there's something internally wrong with that transfer pump now so anyway i went over and grabbed another transfer pump stuck it on i've got that check valve freed up i've primed it back up again and i should hopefully be good to go to start cranking on it and hopefully it'll start now <laughs> Well, it's a runner. There were a few more attempts in there to get it started than what you guys will see in this video, but that was the initial startup. It missed a few times there in the beginning and then it cleared up and seemed to be running just fine. 